Okay, now we look at the detection of outlier in MLR, multiple linear regression. Okay, uh, in MLR one, we can have both X and Y outliers, which is um, outlier ataupun high leverage point. And also, we can uh, make the detection whether that outlier or high leverage point adalah um, influential observation or not. Okay, in S, uh, like I said before this, in SLR, outlier were relatively easy to detect via, via scatter plot ataupun residual plot. Kan kita boleh tengok uh, daripada situ. Tapi in MLR, it becomes more difficult to detect the outlier via the simple plot. So, we have uh, several uh, methods to de uh, for the de detection of the um, outlier uh, together with the... Also, the detection of high leverage point, which is the extreme value in x direction, and also uh, the influential observation. Okay, let's see. The first one adalah detecting the outliers in the response y, which is the outliers can. Okay, uh, have seen how we can use residual for identifying the problems with normality, constancy of variance, and then juga linearity. Okay, we could also use residual to identify the outlying value in Y. Okay, so kita akan tengok uh, using the value of residual untuk nak detect outlier. So, usually uh, kita akan gunakan studentized deleted residual. This is the formula. Ke dalam your textbook pun ada actually. Dalam your textbook pun ada uh, okay, mention di sini. Uh, macam mana nak cari the studentized deleted residual, kita akan gunakan value of residual dan juga MSE and so on. Okay, um, so nak calculate dia ni, tedia sikit lah, kena calculate setiap one by one for every of the observation. Tapi actually we can find the value of SDR ni, uh, apa ni, we can generate from uh, software SAS ataupun SPSS pun ada juga. Okay, so kita tengok dulu macam mana, how we can make the detection using this value of SDR. Okay, so uh, actually kita akan comparekan the, dia punya value of SDR dengan T-distribution. Tetapi uh, kita lagi, uh, apa ni, uh, it is more easier for us just to uh, compare the SDR value which is the student touch related residual of the magnitude of 3 or more. Okay. Uh, absolute value of SDR, the uh, absolute value of, DR, uh, of SDR uh, should be uh, more than or equal to 3, then we can consider that point ataupun observation adalah outlier. Okay, absolute value SDR is 3. Okay, the absolute value of SDR ataupun biasanya kita uh, dia punya notation adalah T lah. T itu adalah SDR. Okay, the absolute value of T. If uh, the T, uh, the value of, uh, the, the absolute value of T adalah more than or equal to 3, then we can consider that observation adalah outlier. Okay, let's see the example here. Okay, kat sini example ni, ini adalah residualnya. Okay, ini adalah value T. Itu value SDR. Okay, ini SDR value. Okay, we can generate this value uh, using SAS ataupun SPSS. Okay, so kalau kita tengok kat sini, dia kata ini adalah value of residual, di uh, di diagonal element of the hash matrix dan juga student task related residual of the body for example with two predictor variables. So, we have X2 daripada sini. Okay, so uh, according to this, all the value of RT, observationnya ada 20, we have 20 point lah, 20 point. And then, uh, sorry, we have 20 observation. Okay, so kat sini uh, dia punya uh, to predictor variable ada 2. Okay, observationnya ada 20. Ini adalah value of SDR that we generate from SAS ataupun SPSS. So, from daripada sini kita observe, ada tak value yang 
uh, lebih besar or sama dengan 3 absolute value of str 3 more than or equal to 3 so kalau kita tengok yang paling besar dekat sini adalah the value, the largest value of str here is 1.8 right negative 1.825 so kalau kita letak absolute dia akan jadi positif lah positive 1.825 so the largest value here belong to the observation number 13 but uh, because of this value value of absolute str here is not more than 3 so we can say that none of this observation adalah outlier ok so itu the first one outlier kita gunakan str ok yang kedua uh, adalah detecting the outliers in x ataupun high leverage point ok kita boleh kita boleh detect uh, the outlier in x uh, using the value of HII from the hat matrix which is the diagonal HII ni adalah diagonal of the hat matrix ok you know how to find the hat matrix before this kita dah tengok sebelum ni tapi uh, no need for you to calculate manually sebab banyak sangat kan let's say data kita 20, 50 uh, then we also can generate this value uh, using the SAS and juga SPSS ok so apa macam mana kita nak detect whether our observation adalah uh, high leverage point so kita consider yang ni leverage considered large if it is bigger than the twice the mean leverage value ok so if value of of HII ok the, the value of HII more than 2p over n then we consider that observation adalah uh, leverage ok adalah uh, outlier in x direction ataupun high leverage point ok so let's see the same example tadi ini hi, HII which is the diagonal of from the hash matrix kita ambil dia di, di, di diagonal ok uh, so kalau diagonal kan let's see lah saya tunjuk sikit mana kalau you all nak tengok Mm -hmm. Oh tak dekat sini. Okey. Ini kan. Ini dia punya mm, matrix. So uh, you multiply all of this then you akan dapat uh, square matrix. Then the diagonal will be the value of HII for every observation. Okey, let's say this. So kita nak check tadi uh, we can say that the observation adalah a leverage value if uh, the value of, of HII adalah more than more than the value of 2P over N. So, you kena check dia punya uh, uh, rule of thumb 2P divide by N dulu. Okay, because of here, X adalah 2, number of predictor variable ada 2, so P will be 3. Right? And N adalah number of sample size is 20. So, the answer will be 6 over 20 so it is 0 0.3 so uh, we observe the second column here is there any value of HII which is more than 0 0.3 value ok here right and here ok ok so we can say that observation number 3 and observation number 15 adalah uh, leverage value because of HII sorry, oh, because of HII for these two observation adalah more than 0 0.3 ok, so that's the way how you uh, find that, uh, how you interpret that ok, so daripada kita punya data tadi ni, kita nak check dulu kan macam like I said before this, kita check dulu our data ada ulaya ataupun high leverage value Kalau ada any of this, ada outlier ke, ada high leverage value ke, baru kita check whether this, uh, whether this two point, whether this uh, observation adalah influential observation ataupun tidak. So, sekarang ni kita dapati observation ketiga dan observation ke lima belas adalah, uh, adalah uh, high leverage point. So, we need 
to make further investigation whether these two observation okay these two observation adalah influential observation atau tidak ataupun tidak then daripada situ baru kita boleh decide whether kita nak delete ataupun kita boleh stakan these two uh, observation okay okay so let's see tengok pula macam mana nak identify the influential cases so we have three methods according to its uh, definition ataupun function Okay, so not all the outlier have a strong influence on the fitted model. Some measures to detect the influence of each observations are kita ada tiga, tiga uh, cara, which is the Cook distance. Measure the influence of an observation on all fitted values. So Cook distance ni kita measure influence untuk observation, uh, influence of that observation dari outlier ataupun high leverage point on all the fitted value, all the fitted value y hat sahaja. Kalau kita kena check ketiga-tiga lah sebab di FIT pula measure the influence of an observation on its own fitted value. Its own fitted value sahaja. Uh, kalau observation pertama uh, yang apa ni let's say ianya adalah outlier. Yeah. So observation, uh, uh, apa ni? observation pertama tu lah kita check whether it is influence on its fitted value. Its fitted value. Kalau cook distance untuk semua. Observasi pertama sehingga lah observasi ke-20 tu dia akan influence kan. Kalau ikut distance uh, huruf ni lah. Di F beta pula, measure the influence of, on, of an observation on a particular regression coefficient. Untuk uh, particular coefficient saja. So, dia akan ada, uh, di F beta ni akan beberapa value. Depends pada how many independent variables uh, that involve. Okay, so let's see one by one. The first one adalah di F fit. Okay, di F fit tadi. Kita nak assess the influence of the data point on its own prediction only. So, how macam mana kita nak detect adalah using the value of the uh, DF fit. Okay, ada formula nak cari DF fit. Ada tapi it's complicated. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this DF fit. Okay, ni formula untuk dapatkan DF fit. Tapi uh, sama juga, we can... Um, generate from the this this one eh? kita gunakan high leverage uh, leverage value juga uh, sorry uh, diagonal matrix from from hat matrix okay so kita boleh generate from um, a software juga lah okay so the value of the F rate ada dua untuk small data if you, our data is small data set so kita boleh detect Uh, if the effect absolute value of the effect eh? absolute value of the effect bigger than 1 so we can say that the observation adalah uh, influence observation influential observation kalau data set large so it will be absolute the value of more than 2 multiply square root of p over and so kena kira dulu Let's see the example the data set here. Data set yang sama tadi. Uh, body fat. We have N20 and we have uh, two predictor variables. Okay, let's see. The first column here adalah value of the effect that we generate from the software. Okay, so daripada sini, kita dah ada value of the effect for every observation. 1 sehingga 20. Okay, so tadi kita nak check uh, whether our... Uh, whether uh, any of the observation here adalah um, adalah influential observation or not. Okay, so because of data here 20, we consider this is a small data set. So, kita ambil uh, rule of thumb yang pertama, which is the absolute value of the effect more than 1. So, let's see here, ada tak value of the effect more than 1, which is this one, right? So, we can say that the third observation adalah influential observation on its prediction only. Maksudnya, dia akan influence prediction, predicted value untuk observation ketiga sahaja. Yang lain-lain dia tak akan influence. Okay, itu untuk gunakan, itu kalau kita gunakan di FP. Check pula untuk cook distance which is kita nak tahu ianya influence uh, that that observation influence in all predicted value or not. So, kita gunakan cook distance value. 
uh, dia punya rule of thumb adalah the CD value more than 4 over N suggests that an observation has influence in all predicted value. So, so good distance this one, uh, notationnya biasanya adalah D. Okay, uh, this one the, the, apa ni? The, the, the formula untuk dapatkan D actually. Kalau nak kira manual D. Okay. Okay, so D good distance here. So, if we can see here, ada tak any of this? Kena kira dulu lah. Uh, 4 over N. Uh, okay, 4 over N, yes. So, 4 over N adalah 4 over 20. So, the value is 0 over 2. Okay, so uh, is there any observation here that have the value of Cook distance is more than 0 0.2. Okay. This observation, right? This observation. 0 0.2. Okay. Kita check tadi, balik tadi. Observation ke berapa adalah outlier tadi? Uh, no, outlier high leverage point kan? 3 and 15 tadi. Okay. So, kita kita so kita punya intention sekarang ni, kita punya priority disebabkan uh, observation 3 and 15 tadi adalah um, adalah high leverage point. So, kita nak tengoklah uh, observation ketiga dan ke-15 ini adalah influential observation ataupun tidak. So, kalau gunakan DF fit Yes, kita boleh katakan the third observation adalah influential observation on its own predicted value. Uh, and then kalau kita gunakan cook distance pun, kita boleh katakan the third observation juga akan influence all the predicted value. Tapi, uh, observation ke 13, oh yes juga kan? Here, more than 2. So, observation 13 also will influence all the predicted value. <coughs> okay, yang yang the last one adalah the effects. Uh, assess the influence on each observation on each parameter individually. Kita akan check satu-satu uh, apa ni coefficient sama ada this uh, apa ni uh, observation tadi will influence the coefficient secara individual. Okay, so how to detect that? The absolute value of the effects. will be more than 1 untuk semua data set dan absolute value of the f betas more than 2 over square root of n ok untuk large data set ok so berbalik kepada the same example tadi this is the value of the f betas why the value of the f betas ada 3 untuk beta not beta 1 and beta 2 because of we have 2 independent variables so we will have 3 parameter ok Coefficient lah kan parameter tu coefficient. So kita check one by one untuk coefficient uh, beta naught. Okay because of this data set is small data set, so kita compare dengan absolute value of the beta dengan one lah. So if we can see here untuk column beta naught, there is no uh, value of the the beta that is more than value of one. So uh, the observation ketiga dan ketiga belas tadi not will not influence the uh, coefficient of beta naught. How about beta 1? More than 1. So, here, right? Then, juga beta 2. Okay. So, we can say that from here, we can say that the observation uh, 3 adalah influential observation and it will influence the it, it will influence the coefficient of beta 1 and beta 2. Okay. Okay, so that is the way how you uh, interpret the value of this na na assessing the uh, influential observation. So, secara overallnya, kita boleh katakan uh, observation 3 and observation 13 adalah influential observation. Walaupun 13 ni, uh, yang lain-lain ni tak ada, tidak melibatkan, dia tak secara, apa ni, secara it have the it does not have the high uh, the high 
uh, influence in detecting the uh, predicted for the un uh, predicted value dan juga all the um, uh, coefficient tetapi it still influence observation uh, for all the predicted value ok, tapi yang ketiga ni memang lagi terang lagi bersuluh lah yang mengatakan this third observation adalah um, influential observation ok ok, so that's all actually um, so let's see this is actually the last year paper from June 2009 STA 600 ok, false expiratory volume FEV is an index of pulmonary function that measure the volume of air uh, expelled after one second of constant effort. Its volume is depending on the age and height of the individual. Okay, so kat sini kita boleh katakan Y adalah FEV dan independent variable di sini adalah the age and height of the individual. Okay, an experiment was conducted and data from 10 individual was collected. Okay, so we have small data set which is 10 only. Okay, uh, so dia kata kat sini examine the above information and identify any outlying observation. Hence, use the appropriate measure value on the identified observation to assess their influence. So, what do you conclude? Okay, so first of all, kita check dulu untuk, uh, so, uh, kita nak check untuk outlying observation, kita check dululah sama ada um, Ada ke tidak outlier dan juga high leverage point in this data set. Barulah kita boleh check untuk outlier. Uh, sorry, untuk uh, influential observation. Okay, so kita check dulu untuk <coughs> outlier dan juga high leverage point. So, as residual kat sini adalah hmm, value of SDR tadi. <coughs> so, macam mana kita kita punya uh, apa tadi rule of thumbnya adalah Mm -hmm. The value of S SDR, absolute value, should be more than 1 untuk small data set. So, from here, we can see that we have, eh, sorry, more than 1 or more than 3? More than 3, right? More than 3. So, if you can see here, observation kedua, then observation the 10 and the second observation having uh, the SDR more than 3 okay absolute value of SDR more than 3 so we can say that from here we can say that the second observation then the then and the 10 observation adalah uh, outlier okay okay how uh, the second the next one kita, kita check pula untuk high leverage point which is the head diagonal from head matrix which is the value of HII lah ok diagonal from head matrix ok so macam mana dia punya rule of thumb tadi we can check whether HII should it, uh, it is more than or less than the value of 2P over N so calculate dulu the value 2p over n. So, 2 multiply the parameter here adalah 3 because of x is 2 divide dengan n adalah 10. So, the value will be 0 0.6. So, observe here there is any observation that having the value of HII is uh, uh, more than 0 0.6 okay there is no one no none of the observations that have the value of head diagonal more than 0 0.6 so we can say that none of this observation adalah high leverage point so sekarang ni kita ada, kita ada layer tapi tak ada high leverage point okay so kita check pula whether these two how layer tadi adalah influential observation ataupun tidak so dia bagi kat sini ada dua value distance dan juga dia fix so kita boleh tengok uh, whether the outlier ni influence 
uh, its own predicted value ataupun all the predicted value of the observation. So let's see the cook distance first. Okay, so macam mana kita punya um, rule of thumb untuk cook distance. Okay, the cook distance should be more than 4 over n. 4 over n which is 4 over 10. So the value is 0. 0.4. So here, if you can see here, ada tak value more than 0 0.4 here. Here, this. Okay, so we can say that the second observation will influence the will influence the predicted value of all the observation. Okay. Okay, so second observation adalah influential observation. Okay, let's see pula untuk the effect. So, macam mana the effect kita punya um, rule of thumb because of tadi adalah semua data set so the effect the absolute value of the effect uh, should be more than 1 ok so if you can see here kita ada dua value yang more than 1 if you can see here absolute value is more than 1 which is the second observation and the third observation so from here we can say that the second and the third observation will in influence its own predicted value. So, secara keseluruhannya, for the summary, we can say that the second observation and the third observation adalah influential observation. Okay, so that's how you uh, conclude about the outlying and influential observation. Okay.